speaker then. So welcome everyone to Advocacy and Outreach. The recording has started. So Oleg, do you want to take us through the agenda? You want me to drive that? I uh, can um, uh, summarize the agenda, but okay. uh, full disclaimer, I may drop at any moment. All right. Uh, so yeah, we wanted to follow up on the recent uh, event with Meetup removal. Uh, so there is a thread in the developer mailing list which summarizes uh, the sequence of events and uh, the next steps. Uh, so I just wanted uh, to follow up on that. And another uh, related thread is about archiving all channels um, uh, we used for Jenkins area meetups and for events and uh, replacing them by advocacy and outreach seek. So to optimize uh, the effort uh, um, uh, we spent on that. And then a lot of other topics like FOSDOM status, uh, community breach updates, mostly for funding. Um, and uh, the Jenkins X positioning is just a sporadic thread we had in Gitter before the meeting. So I put it uh, to the list so that we can uh, discuss it. Um, okay, so mm, that's uh, it. Great. All right, so Alyssa, you want to give us an overview on the meetup removal retrospective and what we've learned to date? Um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> at the governance meeting yesterday, uh, we did get approval to use this SIG, the outreach, the advocacy and outreach SIG to as a, um, as a support system for new jams. And I've updated that on my, um, my pull request mm -hmm. um, on, uh, on that I've been updating uh, for CIC, CICD meetups and jam. Um, so um, that should reflect on that page. Um, and then what else? Uh, so, I mean, we still keep the um, the organizations, the um, the logistics uh, that still needs to go through CDF, but we just open it up to that you know, that this, this SIG is, um, is a place where people can come and get advice and help if needed. Um, what was the other item that was in there yesterday, yeah. Oleg, I forget. So, yeah, basically we approved uh, shutting down of inactive meetups in uh, principle. Oh, yes. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, summarized uh, the discussion we had uh, last week uh, about the meetups. The proposal is to basically immediately step down uh, from meetups uh, which have never happened. Uh, so the meetups get recovered and then Steve basically can immediately step down so that uh, the meetup.com adoption process starts. Um, and for the meetups where we had uh, an event at least once, we have a grace uh, uh, period uh, where we try to recover the meetups um, in the community. So this is what we approved yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, agreement in principle. So the decision, uh, the final decision and the final process uh, definition is delegated to event officer. So basically it's uh, you, Alisa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll work closely with Jackie on where we are with regards to the deleted meetups. Um, and I, and I have an update for that too. Oh, cool. Yeah, so um, I I sent so I added um, both Oleg and your and you Alyssa to the communication about the next steps, um, and then I also just shared with you guys the uh, Excel sheet, and so I was I have an email in my draft Oleg to the message that mm -hmm. you sent this morning. So Meetup restored all of them, um, however, some of them they ran into issues and data was lost. They can work on recovering that data, but what I wanted to do was make sure that we prioritize all of the meetups that do want to um, be part of that grace period first, 
Um, so that's why I wanted to send out that communication so that we can, so like, for example, you just said, hey, can you please um, work on getting all the Scandinavian um, meetups up? Those should be up. And if they're not up, let me know. Um, and it sounds like they're not. So I'll send meet up another note and let them um, ask them to prioritize those groups first um, so that they can recover them. Because everything should have been recovered and restored as of last week on the 7th. Mm -hmm. Um, but it seems like it's, it, it's not. So, um, so I'll send them a reminder note and, um, yeah, so any meetups that want to be restored and their data was lost, we're happy to prioritize them and recover it. We just need to know which ones they are. Uh, yeah. So, um, currently we have 59 meetups. Uh, so it means that approximately 40 meetups haven't been restored yet. Yeah. And so that's, I, that's what I'll send her and be like, hey, what happened to these other 40 meetups? Because you guys said that everything that we went, we've asked them to shut down should have been restored by now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not. But yeah. no, thanks for the status update. Um, are there any specific inputs about priorities uh, from others on the call? No, I think I think you had the right description of the priorities, right? It is mm -hmm. priorities should be those groups that are are most that were active, therefore had Scandinavia, the Russian, the the mm -hmm. meetup that are you. Mm, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, yellow tabs. So I mean, uh, uh, happened at least once. Right. And uh, it would be also nice to restore Bay Area Jam because okay. yeah, for me it's just no no brainer that we can uh, have CICD meet up in the Bay Area. Yeah. And right now we know uh, we don't. So for me it would be just a good uh, experiment in terms of renaming two CICD meetups and uh, facilitating the community around it. Okay. Uh, Yeah, regarding meetup, um, yeah, I also communicated it uh, to Jacqueline, but we do not longer need to restore Yaroslavl Jam. Okay, any other comments about priorities and things to be restored? Nothing from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, none from me. Okay, so I'll set up a meeting with Meetup um, for tomorrow and just let them know, hey, like what happened with those other 40 ones because they're not popping up um, on our page and then please restore these and work on the data mm -hmm. recovery for them. So yeah, I also noticed that even in restored Meetups, uh, not all uh, member numbers were restored. So okay. for example, in Moscow Jam, we lost approximately 300 participants. Um, can you also even... highlight that in, in the notes um, so then I can yeah highlight all of the ones that you mm -hmm. lost data on um, that you want me to recover and then they'll work on those first. Yeah. Uh... I unfortunately I don't have approx uh, exact numbers I, I don't need exact numbers I just need the name of the groups and I will let her know that these groups were affected and data was lost and that they need to go work on, a, uh, on recovering it. Yeah, any, uh, yeah in, in uh, Moscow, yeah. So anyway, uh, it, it's probably less uh, a priority because if you have the meetup page, well, eventually these members will come back mm -hmm. or not. Um, so. It's unfortunate, but it's not something uh, uh, we can leave without. But yeah, just restoring the meetups would be crucial. Okay. 
yep, I'll get on her again to, to see what happened. Jacqueline, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, I, I know there were a lot of emails going back and forth regarding this, but do can you just like give me a, a t TLDR of how this happened? Yes. Yeah, so we did a scrub of all of the meetups that uh, currently are under the pro network account. And we identified over 60 uh, groups within the meetup pro account that in the year 2009 um, did not host any events. So to us, that was an indication that there was no active organizer and that there was just no, no one was really moving the group forward. So um, after doing the math, that was about $7,000 um, that we paid for Q1 for groups that in 2009 never hosted an event. And then when we looked at more data, it was the, since they joined the pro account, um, some groups had just never even hosted one event. Yeah, 27 meetups. Yeah. And so, um, and then the other ones just never hosted an event in 2019. And the last time that they had hosted an event were like between the years of 2015 and 2018. And so that was, we took that as an indication that these groups were no longer active. Um, what we didn't realize was that meetup is being used um, in another way. And I think it's what we gathered was that it's being used more as a way to communicate to, to some of these um, jams members, but it's also just not the right way to be using this platform. Um, but we're happy to like, that's why we're working on restoring all of these because um, we want to be accommodating to the community and, and we just didn't realize that this is how they were being used. Okay. Thank you. One final question. Uh, when the determination was made that, uh, these were not being used after the scrub, was any communication sent out prior to removing these to maybe Alyssa or to Oleg or, or anybody in the, in the community? Uh, no, we did not. That's, that was where our mistake was. Uh, um, Will there be can some... Can I clarify it a bit? Um, because, um, actually there was communication sent. Uh, but the communication was sent uh, only to meetup organizers um, as a part of uh, incoming uh, transition to CDF this month. Yeah. So there was an email to all meetup orgs saying that uh, meetups will be transitioned to uh, CDF uh, and uh, then uh, there will be review of inactive meetups and that uh, you will uh, get some communications about uh, meetups uh, which uh, are considered as inactive. So there was a warning for a warning for meetup organizers that uh, a review of inactive meetups is going to happen, uh, but uh, it was the only communication which was sent. Yeah, so I think one, the, oh, sorry, go ahead, Alyssa. Yeah, so so Marky, um, I mean, there were some things that fell through the cracks when we between between um, the time that we, as in Max uh, and myself from Cloud Bees, where we sent out that initial message, and then the transition took place, and then Jackie took over. So between the, that time, um, you know, we didn't follow up with an additional uh, communication. And so that's when things just, when we exchange hands, things just fell through the cracks in some ways. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that, uh, and this is more kind of where I was going with my line of questioning, is there a way that, A, we're doing some type of uh, like business disruption or, or we're, we're, we're basically learning from what we did so we don't repeat it either in this fashion or somewhere else when we transfer something? Mm -hmm. I, I just want to make sure that we're capturing what was missed and that we're, we're proactively finding a way so it doesn't happen again. And mainly I, I want that for the community because I think it would be good to be transparent about, hey, this is where we messed up and this is how we're correcting it. It just gives people that warm and fuzzy that, ah, oh, well, you know, everybody's human. And Yeah, and, and, that, and that's what that e, um, email com communication that I added Alyssa and Oleg to. I have a document where 
I go through all of that where it was just like, hey, we did a scrub. This is where we made our mistake, which was not to um, be more proactive in our communication. And then these are like the as a result of us trying to remove these uh, pro, uh, excuse me, these groups from the pro network account. Um, when this was done, this is what happened. And um, so it, it's there, it's documented already. I just wanted Alyssa and Oleg's feedback first before I send it out. Awesome, thank you. That answers my, my questions and I thank yeah. you very much. Both yeah, of you no problem. I mean, yeah, like this was, I, to be quite honest, I just wanted them removed from the network so that they weren't being charged to our account. What wasn't explained to me in the process what that, that they were gonna be completely deleted. So, um, but yeah, we, I've documented the next steps, so. Um, and then also just identified all of the all of the groups that we initially targeted. So, you know, working working on that on, on that fix. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. And so all of us have to learn. Uh, but the, the idea of uh, removing connective meetups is important because yeah the cost of seven uh, k usd per quarter is quite high and definitely there could be much better use uh, of this money than uh, sponsoring connective meetups yeah and we're happy you know we're happy like i also want to just make sure that um, this doesn't get lost no as we're happy to continue sponsoring meetups it was mm. just when we looked at that data it just looked like there was no one was using them um so I just didn't realize that people were just using them more as an email platform than really as a place to um, promote events. And that's how that data is being interpreted is every, every time you post an event, that's, that's being measured as activity on that, for that group. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's right. So another step on us would be to proceed with the meetup shutdown process, um, as we discussed. And uh, the, I guess Alisa now uh, can work closely with uh, CDF uh, to implement this process. And there is uh, a decision from the Jenkins community, which basically approves whatever the process we discussed. Yes, I will do that. Yeah, so one thing is still, it would be great to do a best effort to recover meetups. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Once they are uh, republished. Because, yeah, these meetups could be used as a foundation for CI CD meetups. Uh, yeah, in, C in Bay Area, we had uh, several southern people, I'm not sure how many. Uh, but yeah, if we just rename it to CI CD meetups, it's a good user base for promoting whatever events. Yeah, and hopefully also just getting somebody to also uh, be more of an you know, a, a, an organizer as well. I think that's also important for us to focus on next. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So are we are we settled then with the jam retrospective and follow up? So we still have, <clears throat> I think Jackie and I still have a lot to do with regards to um, you know, uh, where we are in plans for communication going forward, Mark. So there's still things for us to do still. Yeah, also there are some action items uh, right on the Jenkins community because we yeah. need to upgrade our meetup program pages. So there is a um, kind of cool request from Alisa uh, which does that. Um, so, yeah, I just lost the, uh, uh, yeah, update uh, uh, the jump program. Um, so, I think I'm, I've uh, pretty much updated my part, Oleg, but you can let me know what else I'm missing. Yeah, I uh, edit, uh, I request changes, but uh, they're quite minor. Okay. So I believe we can uh, quickly land that. Uh, so 
yeah, hopefully it will be landed soon. Okay. So uh, we still promote uh, Jenkins server meetups for meetups, which decided not to rename to CICD meetups. But in any case, uh, the most of the operations uh, go to Continuous Delivery Foundation. So the amount uh, of responsibilities on the Jenkins side uh, gets reduced. Um, and we wrote everything to advocacy and outreach special interest group so that we have less entities to maintain on our side. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one thing to it uh, is we may need to reconsider the scope of responsibilities of the event officer because uh, yeah. Yeah, right now um, a lot of uh, responsibilities actually go to meetup operations and now uh, it's on CDF. Mm. Well, we still want to help use meetups, uh, but we won't be able to fully deliver of uh, responsibilities as documented. Right, yes, yeah, so, so mm. there, Jackie, the the story is that the this precise list of duties for the event officer in the Jenkins governance documents describes things that were specific to meet up that we think are probably better handled by you. Did I say that yeah. correctly, Oleg? Just yeah. because you you will now have permissions to those some of those things, so we actually need mm -hmm. to reconsider should the event officer official description be corrected, so that we can mm -hmm. admit we're going to rely on CDF and Jackie to handle that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, the way we can. Know. Yeah. Just let me know how I can get plugged in so I can take over that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, basically, you already did that. Yeah. So uh, there is uh, <laughs> a CD Foundation uh, meetup page which documents the processes. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, what we are going to do is to just rely on this page uh, and yeah, to help a way we can outside. So for oh, example, okay, okay. promoting events uh, through our channel with uh, Han, uh, open, uh, Jenkins Meetup organizers with content speakers. So this is what we still can do as advocacy and outreach special interest group. Okay. Um, and uh, I believe that we should keep doing that. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the operations part, uh, it's already documented on the CD Foundation side. Got it. Okay, so Alyssa, I'll set up some time for us to just make sure that we cover everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, thanks a lot to everybody. And thanks a lot, Alisa, Jacqueline, uh, for putting a lot of effort into that. Yeah, sorry guys for all the thrash i cost <laughs> now we're just one thing to one thing to i i always like to make people aware of jacqueline we're yeah. human and yeah. nobody faults you for being human that's so don't don't feel that you oh my god i screwed up on them no you're human mistakes happen so yeah. we just fix them and we learn from them that's the best part about it but we for fix sure. them collaboratively so again don't discount yourself <laughs> Thank you. Agreed. And I mean, nobody expected that uh, this data corruption would happen, you know, with meetup.com once they delete it. That's that's on their side. Yeah. That's, that's a yes, big problem agreed. on their side. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're trying, and like, we're trying to fix that. That's why I just want to make sure that like the ones, let's tackle the stuff that's like high priority and then ha let them work on that other stuff um, yeah. afterwards. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should we move on? Yep, okay. yes. Okay, so anything else to discuss on archiving down the old channels? I assume yes, that we've got, that's a process we need to, to work through uh, just to shut them down? Well, there is no process because we have never done that. Ah, okay. uh, but uh, yeah, we have uh, issues with uh, old channels we used to do. So there is Jenkins CI jump channel. Uh, this channel mostly was used for meetup operations. And again, uh, uh, there is no specific need to keep it running since meetup operations go to the CDF process. Uh, so my proposal is to just shut it down archive because uh, maintaining it is additional effort. Uh, it, uh, we also have issues with spam there. If you just go to the channel, you may discover that uh, two thirds of the channel uh, advertisement of whatever IT related stuff not related to jumps. 
so yeah, my suggestion, archive it, use CDF, sorry, um, advocacy and outreach seek uh, for all kinds of uh, communications. I mean, promotions of jumps, content, speakers. Uh, so this way we can have a call help and help. Okay. Yeah. And so do we need to do we need to get somebody's specific approval? That's or that was just an operational thing. We decide here in advocacy and we're done. Uh, I got approval from the governance meeting yesterday. Uh, so okay. uh, as far as uh, I'm concerned, the top Jenkins uh, entity approved it. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so regarding other lists, uh, Jenkins events, uh, force them scale, uh, they're just not really active. So I, my proposal would be to do basically the same. Just archive, uh, remove them from the listings. Uh, it will require some uh, additional operations because this mailing list is self-hosted. And actually that's another reason uh, to get rid of them because um, you would rather remove uh, the mail server uh, to reduce the infrastructure costs and to reduce the maintenance cost. So if we can just uh, archive them uh, in a nice way, for example, dumping everything to GitHub or whatever, we could uh, recommission additional service. Mm -hmm. Great, uh, okay. Yeah, so basically we have uh, four mailing lists uh, left on the service. Three of them are listed here. And uh, the first one is Jenkins infrastructure mailing list. And I believe uh, there was discussion about moving out of it anyway. So right. it's out of the scope for this seek, but uh, uh, um, I believe that uh, the um, approach there that we want to move that mailing list somewhere most likely to Google Groups. I mean, we are heavily dependent on Google, on Google Groups anyway, so what could possibly go wrong? Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So is, is that one where we need an action item on the, on the process or? Mm -hmm. Well, I need uh, to figure it out uh, with Olivia. It's uh, infrastructure org admin. I have a plan uh, to discuss it at the next infra team meeting. Uh, so yeah, it won't happen immediately, but if everybody is uh, on board with just uh, decommissioning this uh, list and archiving them, I'm happy to implement it. Great. Is it fine with you, Alisa? Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, because historically this list requires some additional uh, maintenance. If you don't use them, okay, let's get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Ready to move to the next topic? Okay. Let's move. So, for them, yeah, we have a blog post published with announcement. We have a new page on Jenkins.io, which just summarizes uh, all FOSDOM activities and contains uh, archive for previous FOSDOM events. Um, so, our plan is uh, two days of FOSDOM. We also have CICD Dev Room on Sunday. It's February 2nd. Well, it's basically listed on the first link. So you don't oh, need to so no, no point duplicating, thanks. Well, uh, you can post it uh, for whomever reads the meeting notes, but yeah, it's uh, on the link anyway. Um, so in addition to that, we have a Jenkins Contributor Summit on uh, January 31st. Um, it will be a small event because yeah, we are limited to 20 people um, and uh, the focus will be really on contributors. Uh, so there will be no user-focused content there. So we will be talking about governance, about uh, key architecture changes we need to deliver on, about infrastructure changes we need to deliver on. Um, yeah. And let's see how many people we get there. Because so far uh, there are more cancellations uh, than uh, confirmations. Uh, okay. But yeah, uh, there are something like eight, uh, eight or nine RSVPs confirmed, plus other people uh, who are likely coming. Um, and yeah. 
Uh, in addition to that, we have um, uh, trainings for Jenkins and Jenkins X on uh, January 30th. So these trainings are posted as Postdoc fringe events, and we likely need to sp spend more time on promoting them. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, and for example, Mark, uh, since you have access uh, to Twitter now, you could just handle that. Yes. Jackie, I was wondering if we can add these two um, Jenkins to CDF events page. Do we lose Jackie? She's online. She's connected. You're on, you're on mute, Jackie. Okay. I'll, I'll touch base with her after the meeting. Mm -hmm. I have a I have a question in relations to FOSDEM, but more towards the general gist of when we do contributor summits and things prior to a larger event, sort of day zero of uh, mm -hmm. events. Uh, this my question is is based. Uh, do we have any way to track what the number of people that RSVP for a given event versus the number of people that actually show up? And there's a reason why I'm asking that. Yeah, so um, what we do at the beginning of Contributor Summit, we usually do quick self-introductions or count people. Um, so we have a, a list of people who actually participated. But if you ask me whether we update meetup.com to mark uh, people who really came and not, no, we do not do that. I wonder if it would be, so a, 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 mm -hmm. a sub portion to that, I wonder if it would be good if we started tracking that, especially as we come up to Jenkins World uh, 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 US. And the reason that I wonder if this would be good is because we're basing space off of you know the, the turnout we're expecting to get. And if we understand that that people, we're having a higher sign up rate than people are actually attending, I wonder if it makes sense to start charging like a, a sort of hold fee, like $5. And if you show up, it'll go back to you. This way we ensure that, and then we could even donate the money, right? Any people that don't show up, we can donate it to a charity. I just think that may be something to think about. Yeah, so um, I can speak with regards to when we do, uh, when we do the Contributor Summit at um, like DevOps World, we get from like i think in 2019 at in san francisco we had about um i want to say close to 100 people and then same thing for lisbon i think in lisbon we had 85 people that attended um now the the people who registered um most of them did came uh, but then we also had people who also walked in as well. Um, but then I noticed when we do like Contributor Summit before um, like FOSTEM, our crowd here is much smaller. You know, we're, we're staying, we've been staying at around 20 to 30 attendees. And that's been consistent ever, you know, at least for the times that I've been part of the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, there are some usual suspects, uh, people change. But to be honest, we have never experienced the issues with uh, the venue being uh, overcrowded or with mm -hmm. the venue being undercrowded. So maybe tracking the people, uh, well, um, I'm not sure what uh, would be the benefit uh, in that market. Uh, I think it's good to, mm -hmm. to know, and I think it's good from a data perspective. Mm -hmm. If we ever wanted to grab that data, do we have it? If we ever, I, I just think it, we don't have to, I just think it's something we should think about. Okay. Yep. But we don't have to spend an exorbitant amount of time uh, in, on this call regards to that, mm -hmm. but just something that maybe we put in, mm -hmm. you know, sort of as a spike to look at later. 
yeah, maybe it makes sense uh, to consider that uh, for new events being organized like CD Summit uh, to track Jenkins attendance there so that we have some data for CDF, for example, to justify Jenkins contributor summit there and the uh, Jenkins meetings uh, during CD summits and whatever CD conferences. Because yeah, for Jenkins world, uh, it, it uh, becomes a bit different uh, because uh, there is no more Jenkins world. Uh, there is DevOps world now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a great idea to have the, uh, especially like because we're trying to have a CD, a large CD con. If you guys can bring that on site, that mm -hmm. would be awesome. Yeah, so uh, this data would be helpful to understand uh, how much space to get and give the projects to the right. Yeah, yeah, mm. that would be really helpful because I, I mean, that's like eventually that's the the how I envision these CD cons growing, and I'd love it to be more of a meeting place for mm. everybody. Um, but I think right now that's where we're struggling is to to figure out how much budget we really need for each of these and how much to really go out and, and really market and work on sponsorship sales. So that'd be really helpful. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, Mark, anything else about this topic? Or are you satisfied with it? No, I'm, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay, next topic, Community Bridge. Yeah, uh, so for Community Bridge, uh, quick update. Uh, so, what I was doing over the past um, uh, few months is preparing to Community Bridge funding. Uh, because yeah, we use community bridge uh, funding now for to run a mentorship program. So community bridge portal consists of two main parts. One is mentorship, another one is funding. And for funding, uh, yeah, now we need to do something because SPI uh, will not longer accept funding uh, as it was decided in May 2019. And uh, we do not have other donation uh, ways. Uh, so there was an idea to use Community Bridge Portal by Linux Foundation for that. And uh, I just made a proposal in the developer mailing list uh, to implement that as a uh, better implementation so that we can test and evaluate that. And yesterday I got approval for that. So my plan is to proceed and uh, to make some updates on the um, uh, Community Bridge page so that uh, uh, Donations are available not only for mentorship but for other targets. And if the experiment is successful, it could be just additional source of uh, cash flow for the Jenkins project, which we can use for uh, programs for sponsoring uh, targeted changes like documentation or development or for sponsoring meetups. Uh, so, yeah, mm, so far so good, and uh, I hope that we can get it implemented. Uh, I have a question to Jacqueline about that. Uh, so, is it fine from the CDF uh, standpoint if we do this uh, page? Um, let me go up, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure, but I, I'm happy to go and ask Dan. Um, I don't think we would. I don't think there's an issue to be quite honest, um, but I'll just double check in case there's something mm -hmm. that I don't know. Yeah, uh, so uh, there is a lot of uh, Do we lose Oleg? I, think uh, I don't know if we that. lost him, but we did. he did just drop out. So mm -hmm. while we're waiting for him to return, Jacqueline, Jackie, what's your preferred? I'll uh, try to Jack use it. Jackie's great, thank you. <laughs> okay, C K I E. Uh, J A C Q U E. Q U E. Like without Got the it. End. Yeah. Got it like that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
Sorry, yes. And Oleg's note here at the bottom, proposal, let's give edit permission to Mark Waite, is a good proposal. We'll do that later. <laughs> You've all been very patient while I've been typing and he's been accepting my typing. What a, what a terrible waste. Sorry. Okay. So while we, in hopes that Oleg is able to return, how about we switch topics to Jenkins X positioning? This one, I think I can. Online. Oh, you're, are you back, Oleg? Excellent. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted uh, to have a quick uh, vote about the uh, Jenkins mark, uh, mark permissions. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I, there was unanimous acclaim that no need to even call for the vote. They all agreed. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I think we can just do it at the next meeting. So, okay. Because we are almost uh, close to the end. Anything else then on Community Bridge, Oleg, that you wanted to discuss? Mm, nothing else. Um, well, one thing that uh, we got f uh, transferred uh, for Sladen Nunes, um, it's a uh, mentee who was working with the Jenkins project uh, this year, working on uh, JCASC developer tools. Uh, so we got $3,000 transferred from uh, SPI to Linux Foundation. Um, and the, it now appears as uh, sponsorship on Community Bridge. Uh, so the next step is to actually uh, get the payment out so that Sladen re receives the money because the project is completed. So it took a while to do that. Uh, yeah. So mostly on, uh, due to communications on this SPI because yeah, it has never been fast. Uh, but yeah, we're getting there. Okay, so we haven't yet actually had the payment reach Latin? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. So what we did, we self-donated money. So basically Jenkins project donated money to the Jenkins project. Uh, but yeah, on uh, our Linux Foundation accounts. Uh, so now we can uh, do the payment transfer. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, mm -hmm. ready for next topic. We're running out of time, or I may have already run out of time. Jenkins X positioning in Jenkins Media. Yeah, so basically we have never discussed this topic. Uh, so I just ran a phrase um, in a new year blog post that Jenkins X has graduated as a Jenkins sub project and became a new project under the umbrella of CDF. So basically it's just uh, summarizes the current uh, st uh, status. Uh, but yeah, mm, I just wanted to, to ensure that everybody is fine with such working. Agreed from me. Marky? Marky has dropped. Oh, he had to drop. Okay, then I think we've got a, we've got consensus then. Mm. It's fine with me as well. I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just needed some wording, and apparently, uh, so if we oh, make it a kind of official wording, for example, uh, I can use it uh, for press information, or because yeah, we have summary for some projects on the press information, so I can just use it uh, as a citation uh, to put it there if somebody asks. Yeah, so I'm daring to make some changes, or like. Uh, just do it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, be before we drop, so I I have one. Um, I had set up a meeting with Commit Strip for next Thursday. And All I know, right. Oleg, you suggested that we use this channel for that meeting, which I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, but I think our next SIG meeting, our next meeting is is uh, not next week, right? Are you guys okay with me keeping that meeting for next Thursday, or do you want me to move that meeting out? No. I think that it's fine. We okay. can always do our to order meeting. Yeah, it's good for me next Thursday, as far as I know. Yeah, okay. better than uh, in two weeks because we have forced them. Yeah, two weeks yeah. is a non-starter. Two weeks, absolutely mm -hmm. not available. Right. Right. No, okay. All right. I'll keep it for next week.
Mm -hmm. And I anticipate that um, we're going to take uh, probably the whole, possibly the 45 minutes or one hour for it, because it's basically a brainstorming session. Mm. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah. Would you be able to send an announcement uh, to the um, SIG mailing list? Yes. And to the developer, well, we already have it in the developer uh, mailing list. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll update Jenkins calendar to get it posted. Okay. And that, um, I can, I guess I can get the dial-in number information from up mm -hmm. here. They use the same link here, Oleg? Mm, well, we can use the, the same. Uh, uh, so yeah, we can use the same link, but it requires somebody to run it. Uh, because you do not have access to this uh, uh, Zoom right. account. Uh, right. It's basically so, CDF Zoom. So okay. I actually have access to that CDF Zoom account if you need, if Oleg, you're not available. I prefer to use my personal, my own account, but I, I actually have access to the CDF account as well, unless it's password has changed. Yeah, uh, it didn't change. Um, okay. And yeah, I'm also uh, happy to join. So it's less than oh, like correct. I, I you can do it. Great. Okay. Well, we cannot be both online because yeah, taking my network is better to have a backup. Ah, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, if you agree on that, uh, let's do it. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Alisa, for driving that. And, yeah, thanks yeah, a lot uh, to Cloudbiz for doing sponsorship. Here, here. All right. So I think we're done. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, anything else that we need to process before we call an end? Not for me. <laughs>